Now that I constructed the LR1 automaton, now I have to create the path table for that automaton. The first thing I have to do is to give the states numbers. That just doesn't, it really doesn't matter, so I could just write this is state 0, 1, 2, well, let's take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Well, it's not necessary that my final state has the highest number, but, well, I like it, so I can do it like that. And in the pass table, I need one line pair state. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, and the lines weren't enough, as you see. Well, well anyway, it, it doesn't really matter. So, well, uh, the first thing I like to do is to to take the the scan transition that are the one where I write a terminal to each the state. So in that case, it would be B. This is an uh, this is a scan step. Here you have one, and here, and here. And the other ones just have non-terminals. And, well, I nearly forgot something. I have to give the rules numbers as well. So, um, well, I don't need a number for the rule that I added. But I can say that S goes to B, C, M is rule number 1. And S goes to D, A is rule number 2. This is rule number 3. 4, 5, and 6. And now I would like to fill the table. For example, let's see if I'm in state 0 and I want to do a transition to state 1, I have to read a B. So I'm in state 0, I want to read a B, and that means I use a, a scan step from 0 to 1. Well, where I write so B. So S means I did a scan step and I came from 0 and I go to 1. So in the scan steps, I the numbers mean the number of the state I go to. When I'm in state, when I'm in state 1, I can you I can scan an A and move to state 2. So I can I'm go, can do a scan step to stay two. When I'm well, the next one is this one. When I'm in state four, so here is four. I can do a scan step with an A. That's here, and I move to three. So. When, well, the next is this one. When I'm in, in state 5, that is that one, I can read an A and move to step 7. And the last one is that one. When I'm in state 8, so when I'm in state 8, I can read an A and go to state 10. So that is here and I go to state 10. Now I'm done with the scan steps. Well, as next I could, well, for example, I could do the, the go to steps. That's, that are the transitions where I read, where I process non terminals. So that are this one, that, that. And these ones here, this is where I use non-terminals to go to the next state. 
And let's see when I'm in in zero and I read an S, I go to state twelve. So I don't need to write what kind of a step I'm making. I just write where I go to. So when I read when I'm in zero and I read an S and I am allowed to or when I process an S I'm or when I saw the the whole S then I'm allowed to go to step to state twelve. That's why I write a twelve into Z. When I'm in state zero and I read a D I move to step four uh, to state 4, sorry. When I'm in state 0 and I read a B, I can go to state 5. When I'm in state 4 and I read an A, I go, I move to step 6. So in, in A, in A, in 4, I move to 6. When I'm in in state 5 and I read an A, I can go to 8. When I'm in state 5 and I read a C, I can go to state 9. So it must be... I think that's the right one here. And when I'm in... I have to scroll down a little bit. When I'm in state 8 and I read an A, so I read an A in state 8, then I can go to state 11. And now I'm done with the go to steps. And the next one, the last one, is, uh, is to do the reduce steps. That means whenever I read the whole right hand side of the rule, then I can reduce to get a non terminal. So, um, that are, that's what I can do in the states where I have the dot on the, uh, on the end, at the end of the right hand side of any rule. So, here's one case, here, here's one dot on the, at the end of the right hand side of the rule, here, and here, and here, and here, and here, well, and exactly here, but it's not so important. Well, let's, let's start with that one. I am in state 1. And, and now I have to look at the look ahead, where, what I have to process next um, to do the reduce step. So here I have, um, here I'm in state one, so that is that Z line. In the look ahead, I have an A, so that's um, that that column, and you see there's already something in it. And because I'm on the right hand side, at the end of the right hand side of the rule, I can use a reduce step. And the rule, um, well, let's see, b expands to b, that's exactly that rule, that is my rule number 3. So I write, I can do a reduce step with 3, so, well, it's, it's, that maybe looks a little bit messed up, but these two things are in the same cell, so they are in the they are in the column below the A. So I have a shift reduced conflict here, which means that I'm I can't do deterministic LR1 parsing. So they are in the same cell here. Well, and I used the reduce with rule number three. So that's my the number of the rule and not the it's not the state I go to, it's the number of the rule. Now when I'm in state 2, I can do a reduce step when I have the A as look ahead and I reduce with that rule number 6, so D goes to B A, that's exactly that rule. So in state number three, 2, I write reduce with number 6 when my next input symbol we will be an A. And well that's now well let's let's take now let's take state twelve.
that 12 means I have a look ahead. The look ahead is the uh, end of the word, and I'm done with reading the S. So, what I basically write here is just that for um, the word is accepted. So, I don't do any redu any real review steps here. So, then the next state is state number three. And when I'm in state number three and my look ahead is is the end of the word, then I can reduce with rule number five. Well, state three, look ahead of is the end of the word, and I can reduce with rule number five. And the next one, two, it's what I already I already considered two. Now let's take state six. Here I have a look ahead. In, I have a dollar sign in the look ahead, so my word end. So I want to use a reduce step here, and the reduce step belongs to the rule S uh, expands to the A. So that is my, as you can see here, my rule number two. So I want to do a reduce with rule number two. Now in state seven. I want to reduce step, do a reduce step, and my next symbol will be an A. So I want to write a reduce into that cell. And the rule I use is A expands to A, so that is my rule number 5. And the next one in the column will be state 9. Here I have a dollar sign, so I want to write my reduce in the column of the dollar sign and the rule is S expands to BC so it's the one rule number one and now I have just two left state 10 and 11 in 10 I have I want to do a reduce under the when I when my next input symbol will be the word end and the rule is A expands to A, so rule number 5. And in state 11, also under the dollar sign, I want to do a reduce step with those rules C expands to, to A, that's my rule number 4. So I write reduce with rule number 4 into that column. And now I'm done with the past table, and as I already said, um, in all such cases I have no conflicts between whether I have to shift or if I have to reduce. But, well, in this cell you see, uh, then when you, then when you are here in the stage one, and you, then you don't know if you could, if you should just shift the next A or if you should reduce with a B. So you have a shift reduce conflict here. Um, and that means that you can't do deterministic L1 parsing. So the grammar doesn't allow deterministic L1 parsing. And the only conflicts you can have are, well, you can have shift reduce and reduce reduce conflicts when I'm when I'm not wrong with it. So, um, well, exactly that is not... You have two entries in the same cell, so grammar doesn't allow deterministic L1 parsing.